This is part two of a two-part video where I'm talking about this tape player that came from a Boeing 757 aircraft. Now in part one I really just played the announcements back. In this video I'm going to be looking at the tech. Now this is the part that a lot of people would call boring so therefore I've separated it out into a separate video so anyone that's not interested doesn't have to watch it to get to the good bit. There is no good bit on this one. There's no point trying to skip. This is as good as it gets. So let's get on with it. So I bought this from eBay from a company in Israel that deals in tech surplus. They'd listed a handful of these for perhaps a year or so, and I kept seeing them appearing in my search results. But one day they had a sale on, and I gave in and I bought one just out of curiosity. It's a very functional design, but I really do appreciate this latch system. It feels like it would work forever. But of course that's the feeling you want from anything that's supposed to be part of an aircraft. You don't want things to feel flimsy. There's only one physical control on this one. It's a five-way selector which presumably could be adjusted by the crew. The four tape cartridges are all metal bodied. The tapes labelled A, B and C each contain passenger announcements in a variety of languages. One of the tapes is missing its label, but the other two labels are identical to one another, which show that the tapes are supposed to be used as a set of three. Cartridge A contains safety and emergency announcements in English, as well as routine announcements in French, German and Italian, while carts B and C are responsible for the playback of those same routine announcements in other languages. So it would be very important to make sure that you don't get the cartridges mixed up. I'm not sure which number on the dial relates to which cartridge, but no doubt during the pre-flight procedures the crew would move the switch to the appropriate position for the language for the majority of their passengers. So if, for example, the crew wanted to make announcements in Greek, then tape C would be called into action to play track 8. There's a message to play before takeoff, another before landing, and a final one after landing. Of course the crew can make their own ad hoc announcements as well. This is really there, I think, as an option in case there's no one on the crew that can speak the appropriate language. Taking a look inside the machine, you can see that the tape head at the bottom is very worn, especially when compared to the others. This is one that would have played the background music. It's very likely to have been the only tape this machine played if, for example, it spent its time doing a London to Glasgow route. Tape A does have a standard safety briefing on track 5, that's the usual thing about how to use your seatbelts and where the exits are, so they could have played that one, but in my experience they tended to do things like that live, so it's perhaps again here just as a backup. Of course we don't know which plane this was on and what happened to that plane after it left the British Airways fleet. They'll have sold it on to someone else and maybe it got used with a different carrier. Perhaps they continued using the background music cartridge and played it until the tape snapped because the BGM tape has snapped and that head has definitely seen a lot of action. Now looking at the rest of the mechanism, you can see we've got a long capstan down the side here which pushes against the pinch roller in the activated cartridge and then on the right there are three micro switches which indicate the presence of a cartridge in that position. If we look closer we can see that each cart has two four track tape heads. However, these are staggered from one another, so that creates eight discrete tracks which can be accessed on each quarter inch tape, which of course correspond with the eight programs that are listed on the label. As far as the rest of the box goes, well, there's very little to see other than a multi-pin connector on the rear. The larger pins in the centre would be the ones that carried the power, which could be either 115 volts AC or 28 volts DC. We'll assume that the warranty has expired on this, after all it seems to have been produced in or around October 1980, so let's take a look inside. Now it's all held together with one screw, and once the cover is removed you can see there's quite a lot going on in here. Now when I first saw this for sale I thought it was going to be a simple background music machine that would have an on-off switch and I'd be able to send some power into it and tap the audio output and use it as a music player. It turns out that it's a heck of a lot more complicated than that. There's nothing simple at all about this and it's clear that this is only really half of the machine. This is the player but the controls they're all distributed elsewhere in the plane. You can see how a few things in here operate though, for example how it selects which cartridge is to be played. There's a cam type mechanism I think behind this panel which pushes one of three rods through into the cartridge bay and these rods bring the pinch roller in that cartridge into contact with the cap stand. I'll show you how all that works when we look at a cartridge in a minute. I also notice what looks like a big blue battery. Of course, if the plane lost all its electrical power, you'd want this thing to still be able to play emergency announcements. And it turns out, though, that this is actually a heavy grade capacitor rather than a battery, which makes sense. Just out of interest, I tried running some power through the device, but without the rest of the control equipment that this attaches to, it unsurprisingly didn't do anything. 
So now let's take a look at the tapes. The background music cartridge has a different design to the other one, so I'll open that one first. It's an endless loop cartridge. The tape is pulled from the centre of the reel by the pinch roller, and after passing over the playhead is deposited back on the outside of the rotating reel. There's a brake that gets engaged when the cartridge is removed to stop the tape accidentally unspooling, and looking at the tape, it's clear that this really was played until it jammed and then snapped. The eagle-eyed amongst us might have noticed that this is a light sensor, and I'm going to presume that this hole next to it is where the light source would come out of to hit that sensor. It would only hit it though once it had reached the end of the tape, because there's a clear section of tape, and the light would shine through there, bounce back off this mirror on the bottom of the tape cartridge and into the sensor. I'm going to guess the idea was that you wanted to play a full loop of tape every time you activated the background music, but you didn't want it just to continue playing forever. But let's move on now and have a look at one of the announcement cartridges. Now, just like the background music tape, this is also an endless loop, but the mechanism in here is quite a bit different. You'll also notice we've got a date on this reel of 1995. So first off, let's have a look how the cartridge was activated by that rod. It pushes through this hole, which brings the pinch roller into contact with the capstan in the player. So that's how it selects which of the tapes is going to be played. It only brings one tape into contact at a time. Now this is a much more precise tolerance than any other endless loop tape system I've seen before. The tape comes off the centre of the reel, travels under this plastic peg, around another one at the bottom before, passing between two spring-loaded pads, and then onto the foam pressure pad, which is where the playhead would push against it. Then it goes through this tiny gap over another pad, Presumably this is all to keep it nice and clean. And then it goes around the pinch roller and back on the outside of the reel. The slightly unusual thing with this one, and it's something I've seen done before with shorter length NAB carts, is that the tape reel itself doesn't actually spin. The reel is fixed in place. The only thing that moves is the tape as it slides over itself. You might have spotted the foil splice on the tape. This is what the machine uses to determine whereabouts it is on an endless loop. It needs something, so it has one of these before each announcement. So no doubt it counts these as it goes, so then it doesn't end up playing the thank you for flying with British Airways, please take your belongings with you before the plane's even taken off. Let's move on to getting the audio off these tapes. First, the background music cartridge. It's unlikely, even if this machine was working, that that tape head would now do a good job of reproducing the audio. So it's a matter of taking the tape out of the cartridge and spooling it onto a normal reel, and then from there, rewinding it back onto another reel, and then playing it back through my main machine while I recorded it onto a PCM recorder. It turns out that it's a simple piece of music. It kind of swells and grows, then goes back again so the fact that a section of it has been lost or destroyed doesn't really matter too much as I was still able to capture a good 22 minutes of it. Now for the announcements. Well ideally it would be great if I could just plug the playback machine into something. Unfortunately though that something is supposed to be a Boeing 757 and I don't have one. I had to look online though and I could buy one for 14 million dollars which seems a little bit overkill just to capture perhaps 10 minutes or so worth of audio. And while I could thread the tape onto my reel-to-reel -reel recorder like I did with the background music tape, it wouldn't play properly as the heads won't line up with the tracks. In fact, it would sound exactly like this. Señoras y señores pasajeros, les damos la bienvenida a bordo de este vuelo de British Airways. Antes de iniciar el despegue... And while I could manipulate the audio in Audacity to isolate one of the channels, it's going to be no use because each track is overlapping with another one. Esté correctamente colocado en los compartimentos superiores. Ideally, I'd have something like a Fostex R8, which is an eight track quarter inch machine, but I don't have one of those. However, one thing I do have is an eight track cartridge player that I can use. So I got the announcement tape and I threaded it into an eight track cart. Now I've got to say that is easier said than done, but once I got it done, well, it sounds like this. Grasp the nearest oxygen mask. 
Avant le décollage, veuillez vous assurer que votre bagage à main... So what we've got now is a two-track head playing on an eight-track tape, so it's listening to four stereo programs, but each of the channels is a different thing. So it's just a matter of recording the whole tape four times, one for each of the four programs, and then putting that recording into Audacity and splitting the left and right channels into individual tracks. Avant notre décollage, Remain veuillez vous seat. assurer que le dossier de If votre standing, seat... Sit down on the nearest seat. Use the strap on your mask to keep it in place. And those are the announcements that you get to hear in the other video announcements that were probably never previously played in anger from these tapes. Now, I know when I've done videos like this in the past, I'll always get lots of suggestions as to things where people wanted me to do something differently. For example, get the machine working. I've done my bit with this one now. I've got the audio off the tapes. That's what I bought this for, just those tapes. So as far as I'm concerned, this is mission accomplished. But if you've got other designs, other ideas, other things you want to do with one of these, well, there are still a couple for sale on eBay. So you can always buy your own and try and get it working. And good luck to you if that's what you want to do. Anyway, if you want to hear more of the audio from this, there's a link in the video description to the other video where I just really pretty much play the audio whilst trying to distract the viewer that all this is is audio and not much to look at. So I ended up putting some seriously dodgy looking B-roll over the top of it. But anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.